Amen. Let's give the Lord a Lord to him. Let's give the great king a hand. Come on, let's praise Jesus. That great presence is coming in here this morning. Let's praise the Lord. That's a precious thing. A lot of folks go to churches and they can't feel God. We ought to praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We appreciate the Lord for being here this morning. Really thank God for that service last night. I know the Lord really moved and helped us a lot. It helped me a lot. All right. Amen. All right. And uh, I'm going to just follow in that same trend. And earlier I thought I would preach on that or teach on Romans 8. And to take it along with what Paul said, that he sent the spirit of his son in his crying, I am my father. But I'm going to talk today about the disciple in prayer. And I just want to make my first statement. You cannot be a disciple of Jesus and not pray. It don't happen like that. You can be a church person. You can go to church. And uh, you can be a good moral person. But you can't be a follower of Jesus. And uh, we'll first, we're going to go over here. To, let's go to Luke uh, 14 and 27. The first one's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you to bless this word, God. Yes, God, we want you to put something in our spirits, Lord. God, just not words, but God, let it penetrate. And God, go into the soul, into the spirit of man where it does some good. Lord, you said that this word is supposed to be bread for the eater, but seed to the sower. We're trying to sow this word and stir up a prayer, spirit of prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Um, I want to go to Luke uh, 14, 27. And whosoever doeth not hear, bear his cross, and come after me, he cannot be my disciple. Amen. amen. And I, I want to follow that up with John 13 and 12. And I know that we're supposed to touch on fasting and, and uh, we're supposed to touch on prayer too and intercessory prayer. But I think if I can preach on the disciple in prayer, I think I can hit them all. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start right here at verse 12. And so after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments, he was set down again. And he said, know what I have done. You call me Lord and Master. Lord, Master and Lord. And you and say, well, for so I am. And if I, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example. This is the part I want to get to right here. I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. And I'm going to couple that with Mark 1 and 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, 1 and 35, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Amen? But you know, Jesus said, I've given you an example. The Bible said that the first principles of the oracles of God that you have to have one first teach you. We know that Jesus was the apostle of our faith. He was the one that taught the twelve, and they became apostles. And men like Barnabas, Barnabas sat at the feet of the apostles for 13 years. These were men that was trained on how to get something from God. The Bible said in the third chapter of Acts that Peter and John gave themselves continually to prayer and the word of God. Is that right? Amen. So the Bible said, if you be led by the Spirit, you indeed are the sons of God. Right. But you cannot be led by the Spirit and led by your flesh too. That's right. You cannot be led by a carnal mind and claim to have the mind of Christ too. Right. The Bible said, a double-minded man's two minds yeah. is unstable in all of his ways. Yeah. Jesus said, Father, we are one. Yeah. One mind, one faith, one Lord, one baptism. Not two different minds. The Bible says that they that do mind the things of the flesh are earthly, being sensual, having not the Spirit of God. Is that Bible? Yes, sir. Is that Bible? Yes, sir. Amen. And the disciple or the student 
of Jesus has to pray. And what they learned from him, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. But it just wasn't that our father prayer that he taught them. They saw that a great while before a day, he departed, he prayed. They saw that when all men gave him adulation, he ran off from that and got somewhere with God. They saw that when Jesus in secret prayer, when he taught them, if you will pray in secret, my father will reward you openly. That's right. And what he did was the great while before day when he was out there praying, he come the next day working the works of God. Because of secret prayer being rewarded. Also, the way he did this was Isaiah 58. Jesus came exactly through the word. Being a son, he learned obedience. He came through the word. He became the restorer of past to walk in. Because he fulfilled the word of God. That's where the prayer comes in. Yet last night we had a woman say, preach about standing in the gap. The Bible said that Moses stood in the gap for Israel. How did he do? He said, I fell down 40 days and 40 nights and began to cry and to fast and to weep because the sin was so grievous. Many times we start fasting and because God don't talk to us the first day, you throw your hands up and quit. But the Bible said Moses was up there seven days and God hadn't said nothing to him at all. It said, on the seventh day, the Lord called him. You see what I'm saying? Jesus said, well, because of our importunity, persistence, yeah. that men are always pray and not faint. The disciples, the followers, are always pray and not faint, not give up. Just because you don't get what you thought you should get when a, when a lay me down to sleep pray, Jesus' example for us, that he went out in those days and he prayed all night. Yeah. Jesus said the disciple is not above his master. You're not more than me. Uh, You're not yeah. going to get it on a lesser price than what I had to pay. Yes. Yes. We are all going to have to pay the price. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Jesus said count the cost yes. before you start this journey. It's going to cost you something. Yes. Yes. This is a laboring thing. Yes. He said, labor for that meat that endures into eternal life. Yes. Prayer is labor. Yes. I know that, you know, I'm just like anybody else. You get down there and you get to pray and you feel that opposition. Uh -huh. yes. You feel that, that power there. Uh -huh. And you just can't, you feel like if you just stop, you just give up right then. But Jesus said the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Yeah. Even in prayer, you Press into this. You understand what I'm saying? Pressing into this. That's why you don't have no odors of incense because you don't ever put nothing in it to get incense to come out of you. Is that right? You don't have nothing come out of you because you 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 lolly die and you just kick back and it's automatically gonna happen. The Bible says in Ezekiel 36 and 37, yeah, I'm gonna do all these things for you, but yet. You have to seek me to get it. I'm paraphrasing. All right. Is that right? He said, I'm going to give you a clean heart. I'm going to sprinkle you with water and take away all your sins. I'm going to put my spirit in you and cause you to walk in my laws and keep them. But down at the end, he said, but yet you're going to have to seek me to get this. Right. Amen. I know that we live in a generation where we have microwave Christians. <laughs> Come on now. Amen. Yeah. We have microwave Christians. We have the blabbing and grabbing. But I never saw that in the scripture. Come on. We have I'm on name it and claim it. Come on now. Where where does that come? The labor for that meat that endures the eternal life. Come on. Give me the word. What, what, what happened to that? Mm. What happened to that? But listen up for that. In the Spirit of God, if you've got the Holy Ghost, you've got the Spirit of Prayer. Because the Bible says in Galatians that he sent the Spirit of his Son in us, and that Spirit began to cry out, Abba, Father. The Bible says that we get in time where that Spirit in us grows and begins to speak things out of us 
that we couldn't normally say. We don't have it in us. But he knows the mind of the spirit. And I'm not talking about this other stuff. I'm talking about people that pray. There's a difference in folks that pray and folks that just babble off. You get the, most of y'all in his preachers, y'all know that. But there's times that you go along, and this is my experience. You recognize that something is praying when you ain't praying. Yeah. Have you had that experience? Yeah. You go along and your mind is not on it, but something in you is reaching out. Yeah. And something in you at times, I begin to wonder, do you see that? Yeah. Something will come out of you, out of your innermost being. That Holy Ghost is coming out. Uttering things that you can't utter because you don't know. Yes. Listen, not something that you made up in your mind, but the Bible said they spake as the Spirit gave them uttering. Yes. It was the Spirit in them uttering, and when that Spirit uttered, they uttered with that Spirit. All right. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I want to switch real quick. I ain't got that much time. In fasting, Fasting is not just leaving food alone. Mm -hmm. That's not what it's about. That's right. Isaiah 58 said, God said that it is a day for a man to humble himself, yes. Yes. to bow his head down. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that right? It was a day, he said, that you don't exact your labors. Everything else is secondary. God is first. Mm -hmm. Well, we know that there are certain men that had jobs and still fasted. Daniel, for instance, he still had to take, take on administrative works, but at the same time, his heart was reaching out to God. At the same time when he was in the palace, he was constantly bombarding the heavens. And he is another example of pressing in. Because he didn't get his answer within the first week, well, God, I'm going to fast five days. And if it doesn't, Lord, I'm going to fast a few hours, and if you don't give it to me then, well, that must have meant it wasn't God know how. <laughs> Amen? Then, after the first week passed by, and he had fasted, and he had sought the Lord. Second week passed by, and he had fasted, and he had sought the Lord. But he held on till he got the answer. Yes, sir. You understand? He held on till he got the answer. I don't think that God requires the lay person the fast like he do the preacher. This is my opinion. Because Joel said, for the preacher said, let the ministers of my God come and lie all night in sackcloth and ashes. He said, it is your responsibility to cry out for God to bring restoration. And you cannot cry out for God to bring restoration without both fasting and prayer, Joel said. Said, let there be a solemn assembly and call a fast. Every time Israel got in trouble, they called an assembly. Most preachers preach about Jehoshaphat and they praise and God brought the victory. But the part that they leave out is the simple fact that Jehoshaphat saw God first. See, when he got out there on the plane, he could tell them praise the Lord because he had already saw God and got through. See, he had already dispelled that unbelief. Jesus said, this kind come at night but by fasting and prayer. Why couldn't we cast out your unbelief? Yeah. And your prayer and your fasting and that praying and that spirit builds up your faith. Yeah. It builds up that faith. Not, not your blabbing, but that spirit in you yeah. Yeah. builds that up. I'm going to jump to something else real quick. Most people, I, I just got a little time. These are a little longer messages. Just excuse me. It takes a lot of time to work. I'm trying to run as fast as I can because I know it's 20 minutes. Okay? Okay. Now, the disciple in prayer is what I was talking about. The Bible says that Joshua had another spirit, him and Caleb, than all the rest of the people. How did he get that? How did he have no problem with believing that God was going to take him and give him the land? The Bible says that when Moses went down to the tabernacle and he began to pray and the presence of God came in, 
Moses, when he left, Joshua never left. The Bible said Joshua stayed right down there and prayed.